Welcome back to the third video. Let's continue from where we stopped in the previous one. So in this video, we are going to continue with the survey plan drawing. And in this case, we are going to label the beacons and then also label the survey lines for this very plot. So if I check my finished plan, you can see that we have the beacons name. So here we use just point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3, and point 0.4 to label the beacons name. So let's do that. And then also in this video, we are going to look at how we are going to use label the uh, survey lines with the bearings and the, and the distances. So let's continue. So to do that, this is our first point. If I go back to my Reiki diagram, you can see that this is point one, this is point two, this is point three, and this is point four. As you can see. So if you are confused, that is the importance of this Reiki diagram. If you are confused or you are stuck anywhere, you can easily refer back to your Reiki diagram to know exactly what the points are and where they are located. So, to label the point, we need to use a text. And as you can see, the icon for text is right here. So, you can use either a single line text or multi line text. Whichever one you use is the same. So, just in case, if you cannot find the icon here, all you need to do is to type in multi line text. On your command line then press enter and then the next instruction will be specify the first point for the text so i'm going to space click here then drag it to a reasonable size and then click again so that will open up the multi-line text dialog box where i can insert my text format it and do so many other things so if you cannot type in multi-line text you can type m text for short that is a command for typing a, a text in notepad so the first point is p1 so i'm just using p1 here you can use the survey beacon number if you have if it is a if you have it survey and then you have the beacon number you just type in the beacon number there so here I'm using P1, P2, P3. So for the first one is P1. So I can type it. Then if it is, I can use some of these uh, text settings to format the text. If I want it to be bold, I simply highlight it and then click on bold. If I want it to be italicized, if I want it to be strike out and so many things, just like the way you have it in Microsoft Word, you can even change the font uh, the font style there are so many font styles here you can choose from the available ones and then you can choose you can set uh, the font height and so many other things and the text is a very small text so there's no need for all these complicated uh, settings you can justify it you can center it and so many other things just like in microsoft word so if you are done yeah. you are satisfied with what you are seeing you can simply click outside to the activity so as you can see the text is very very small when you zoom when you, you, you use your mouse wheel to roll and zoom to the text it's very very small so we need to increase the size so you select it when you select it on the property dialog box you scroll to where you have the text height so at present the text height is 0 0.2 so we need to increase it so if you cannot see the text box, the property dialog box here, for example, let's assume it's hidden. Remember, I showed it to you in the first video that you can get it from the view and then the properties. So you click on the properties, it will appear under the view menu. So select it, go to the properties palette and then select the text height, then change it. Let me change it to five and see. 
So 5 is too large. Then I will now reduce it to maybe 2. So I think 2, two is, is moderate. So 2 is moderate. So now I need to move or shift the text a little bit to this position. So I'll just select it, click on it. Then type M for move on my command line and then press enter. Then click somewhere close to the text and then shift it close to the point and then click again. So if I if the point is still too large, I can select it and go back and then reduce the size. Let me take it to 1.5 at least to reduce it a little bit. Then click on save to save my work. So I can now, since I now have P1, I can copy the text P1 to all other points so that all the properties will be the same. Or I can repeat my multi-line text and then apply the same properties. But I think it's easier for you to just copy the text to the point, then update the text. This way you will make sure that it will be you'll be sure that all the properties are the same for the beaconing text. So to copy, I need to select the text. Then there is a command for copy. This is the icon for copy for copying object in AutoCAD. Copy. So but if you cannot find it, let me escape. If you cannot find the icon on your icon toolbar, just select the text and then type in copy. Just type in copy on your command line. Press enter. Then you can now click close to the text and then copy the text around. Copy the text to other points. So if you notice that I have this whole snapping option on, which is causing some trouble when I'm copying the text around. So you can easily turn off the whole snap. So when you are done, press enter to terminate the command. So now I need to edit the text to the correct names by simply double clicking on the text and then typing in the correct thing. So this is three. And then this is four. So when you are not satisfied with the position of the text, you can still repeat the move command. Select and then type in move or M for move. And then click and then move it to wherever you want. So I click and then move to wherever I want. Okay, let me zoom to extend to see the entire thing in my screen view. So this is how to enter the beacon names and the beacon number. So the next thing we need to enter is the bearings and the distances. The bearings and the distances, you can find them from the field node, like uh, from P1 to P2. This is the bearing and then this is the distance. So you can copy whatever you have here to the AutoCAD environment. So for example, if I copy it here and then I can now enter the text just like this by typing in M text for multi-line text, then click and then create a reasonable space for where I can enter the text. Then I know that the distance is 30.00 meters. Then enter. Then I know that the bearing is this. So the bearing is 270. And then the minutes and seconds are 00. So I can have it like this. If I wish, I can centralize it by selecting everything and then clicking on align center. So you can see that everything now is now centralized. And when you click outside to apply the text, you see that the text is very small. Just we will have it earlier on. And then I can now select it and then go to the properties 
text height and then increase it a little bit maybe to two no i think i think I, I did the wrong thing this was the line spacing so the text height is what i wanted to increase so as you can see two is too large maybe one even one is also too large then maybe we'll take it to 0 0.5 which i believe should be relative relatively okay so 0 0.25 or better still 0 0.8 yeah i think 0 0.8 is okay for this uh, plan so i need to now i need and I, I now need to rotate the text to fit in on this line that is from point one to point two so select it and then click on and then type r o for rotate and then click somewhere in the middle then rotate it to be perfectly horizontal to that line and then i can now select it and m for move and then move it to the correct position so i think the line spacing is a little bit too big so i will select it and reduce the line spacing so the line spacing is sort of two i'll take it to maybe 0.5 no 0.5 is too small let me just use one so i think one is okay and maybe 1.5 okay 1.5 is better i can now move my text So this is how to write the text for the line bearings and distance. So to do the same thing for point two to point three, I will just copy. Remember that. Remember how to copy. Select and then type in copy. Then click, click on where you want to paste the text. Then enter to terminate the command. So point one to point two. If I go back to my field note, this is my bearings and distance. I can also find the same information in my field book. So from point two to three, it is fifty three thirty eight. Just do have it on the Ricky diagram fifty three thirty eight. So this is 53 and then this is the 38 for the bearing i will now double click then this is 38 for the distance then the bearing is 53 so i can now rotate ro rotate and then rotate it to fit horizontally on the line so if you notice here the distance is supposed to be inside while the bearing is outside at least that is the standard obtained in major part of the country but in some regions in, some, in other part of the world of course to have the distance and the bearing in the opposite manner could be acceptable but in major part of nigeria i think uh, the bearing the bearing is always outside where the distances are, are inside the plot so i think i need to increase this a little so that it will cover to cover the line properly so that is point four point p2 to p3 we have done point one to two and then two to three now let's move on to point three to four so another way to know the bearings and then the distances of the line is to select the line then come over to the properties so from the property you should be able to see the length and then the angle so in this case the angle is 97 from the side and then the distance is 6 meter so this is it for point 3 to 4 so if you look at what you have on the plan it is approximately the same thing 6 meter and then 96 degrees 59 minute 54 seconds 
So approximately it is 97 degrees. So we can now edit that. So the distance is 6 meter. Why the bearing is uh, 97 degrees? I can now reduce the space so that everything will fit in perfectly. I need to also interchange the position of the bearing and then the distance. So I cut, then I paste. So I think this is okay. Then the last one, that is 0.425. I can easily change the text. So if I check my field note, you can see that the last one is 26, uh, 26.6 meters and then 90. 194 12 minutes so i can copy it and then go back to the editor so this is 26.6 26.6 and then this is uh, 94 so i need to rotate it to fit it in horizontally so I'll simply type in r uh, to rotate and I can now rotate it to fit into the line horizontally. Let me increase the space between the VRs. Okay, I think this is okay. I can confirm the bearing and distance by selecting the line and then going back to my properties. And then you will see that the length is 26.6, approximately 26.6. And then this is 194.12 minutes and then one seconds. So th this discrepancy is because we use coordinates to plot the the plan. Had it been you, you use the exact bearing obtained on site to plot the plan, this seconds or fractional decimal uh, discrepancy in the distances and bearings will not be much as you can see here so the bearing of this line is 194 degrees 12 minutes and then one seconds but what we or what we obtain from this site is this for the length the measure we measured 26.60 while using the coordinate it gave us 26.607 so it is negligible there is no actually much difference and then it is acceptable there error so i can save my work and then you can see we now have the label of the points and also the label of the lines that contains the bearings and the distances so this is how to go about that in the next video we are going to continue with other parts of the plan accordingly see you then